Hey, how's everyone doing? This is Oz with Oz Mechanics, and on today's video, I'm going to be having a tool review. So on this tool review, what we're going to do, we're going to be talking about these caliper spreaders, and we're going to see which caliper spreader is best for you. Alright, so these are the three tools that we have right here. And uh, we can start off with this one. This is going to be our basic one. This is pretty much they sell at any auto parts store. Almost every tech has this one. Then we have our pump action one right here. This is a little bit user friendly. And then we have our ratcheting one right here. This one, if I'm not mistaken, just came out. I just seen it and I did buy it. So I'm eager to, to try this one out. So how about we talk about these little tools right here. And then after that, we're going to use them and see which one works the best. So this was actually my first one I bought. I've been having this for almost about eight years. And as you can see, it's still working. Uh, there's a little bend right here. So that lets you know how many I've done. Uh, these are really durable. I do like them. The only disadvantage is if you do a dual caliper, this is going to be a little bit harder to use. So you got to go from each piston on at time. So there's little downsides, but I've been using this for a good while and it's been working. Uh, other thing that you have to do once you hook this up, and we will show you this on the demonstration, you have to get another brake pad. So I use the old brake pad to push on the piston and then we turn this. You do have to have a little bit of strength in your fingers to turn this, but other than that, it's a pretty good tool at cheap price. All right, so this is going to be our pump action one. So the other one, remember, we had to turn it. And this one, all we're doing is pumping. So it basically has the same mechanism. We have our plate in the back. And as you can see, this is fairly brand new. I've only used it maybe twice. But rather than turning, you can just pump it. And then when you're done, hold the back. And then it goes back into place. Uh, I'll tell you this. I do like this one. The only thing is pretty cumbersome. It's a big tool compared to what we have over here. Check out the size difference. And as well, this one, they do have uh, another one for a dual piston. But as well, if you just have this, this one, you can only do one at a time. So move, move, move. Or you can just buy the dual one as well. But these are a little bit pricier. If I'm not mistaken, when I first bought this, this was less than $10. And over here, I bought this off of a tool truck for about 50 bucks. So you get to pick your poison on this. All right, last but not least, this is the new one that I bought. So I actually saw this on Facebook, and I thought it was pretty cool. And it looks like one of those little uh, Star Wars freaking flatter things. So pew, 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 pew. that's kind of cool. But... The cool thing about this one, this one you can actually use it on dual pistons. You don't have to use another brake pad. So when I saw this, I was pretty much sold. And I liked it right from the get-go. And I'm eager to use this. I haven't used it yet. This actually came in the mail two days ago. So let me show you what this does. So this is basically a ratcheting action right here. So I'm just going to hold the two plates in place. And we're just going to go ahead and turn this, make sure that we're in the right position. All right, so we're turning it, and all it's doing is expanding. So I don't know if you can see right there. And there you go. So it expands right there. Uh, you can see the threads right there. And basically, you don't have to buy, like I said, on this one, if it's dual piston, you gotta move from piston to piston. If not, it's gonna kinda go one side this one is long enough and it goes to the center of it and allows it to actually work on the dual pistons and then once you're done you just back off and loosen up everything looks pretty good you know and uh, I'm actually pretty eager to use this. so we're gonna start off with the basic one that I have and then we're gonna do the pump action and then we're going to try this uh, little Star Wars looking thing right here. And we're going to see which one is best. Alright, awesome. So we have the caliper off right now. And we're going to try our first tool right here. So 
So like I said, this is one of my oldest tools. You can see the wear right there, it has it's little battle scars. So first and foremost, what we need to do is retract this back. And that's easy by just turning this over. And like I said, to do these right here, to push them back, you have to get your old brake pad. Don't get your new one because you're going to scuff it up. So what I do, I lay this in there. And then after that, once we retract this all the way back, then we snug it up in there. And then slowly start turning. There we go. And this is how we use our first tool. All right, so now we're gonna use the pumping one. So as well, we gotta get our used brake pad and we're gonna lay it right here. And with our pumping one, we just gotta push this all the way back. And like I said, the only issue with this one is a little bit cumbersome. So it's gonna be a little bit big. And check this out. It can't even fit in there. So we have this all the way pushed back. And right now, like this brake pad is pushed. It just won't fit in there. So, let me get my old trusty. And we're just going to give it a little hand. So you see we have a little problem right there. Now we can fit this one in there okay as you can see it fits in there now not the best fitment and we're gonna go ahead and pump it I can tell you this the pumping action works a lot better I would say this is probably good for big old brake pads or big old calipers but uh I'm still giving the win on this one. But right now what we're gonna do, let's go on the other side of the tire and we're gonna film the last one using this. Um, I just kind of noticed something right now and let me just show you right now. So let me show you the disadvantage of this. Uh, this is already all the way pressed in. So as you can see, the piston's completely pressed in. Let's check this out. Look how much space we have. This is actually not going to work for the actual uh, rear caliper on this Camry. So I still want to use this. So what I'm going to do, I have a, a Lincoln over here that has some bigger calipers. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and use that on this. Let me put this all back together. And then after that, we're going to give this one last try and see if it can redeem itself. All right, awesome. So I'm actually kind of glad that we got to move to this Lincoln Town car right here because we actually have dual pistons here. And I do want to show you why the other ones have a disadvantage on this setup right here with the dual piston. So we're going to bring up this one. This is my uh, the older one that I have. And as you can see, we can't fit this right in the middle. We have to go from side to side. And normally a dual, dual piston was going to do, once you start tying it up, this is going to start moving over here and this one's going to stay back. Same thing when we use our pump action one. As you can see, if we move this forward, same thing. Look at that. So it's only going to pump one side. So at least I gave you the visual on how this looks right here. Now what we want to do is use this one that we have here. So I'm actually ready to use this. I'm pretty sure y'all are too. So let's get to it. So essentially what we're going to do, we're just going to stick this right here in the middle. And like I said, this can be used on one or two. But as you can see, it has those limitations on smaller calipers. It's not going to do it. So when we, when we stick that in there, we just kind of crank it over until it starts catching. So right there, it's in there. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and crank it.
and check that out. And this is dual piston right here. And with ease. That was actually the easiest I've ever done this. And then we just turn this little knob right here, a little lever, and it turns it the other way. And it comes out. So there you go. This a funky looking uh, Star Wars looking contraption. It's actually really good whenever you have a dual, uh, dual piston one. So overall, let's talk about the tools. This one, this is going to be my go-to one. I recommend everyone having one of these. It's a cheap little tool. It lasts forever. It's durable. The only thing that does break off, and I've seen it with a couple other buddies, this actually comes off. If you can get one that's all metal, that would be perfect. Like I said, I've been having this basically my whole tech career. Then you have this one right here. I could probably say this is probably my least favorite out of them all. To be quite honest, I like the little pumping action, makes it a little bit easier and so on, but it is cumbersome. It's a big sucker. Like as you saw when we were working on the smaller uh, caliper, it did not fit in there. We had to use my go-to one to work it in. And then after that, we got to pump this out. So this one, if you have dual pistons, this is the perfect tool. Trust me, I love it. I bought it for less than, what, $25? It works wonders. This is my first time using it, and it was awesome. I just recommend having all three of them. It's not too bad. Under 100 bucks, you can have all these nice little tools. So, how about y'all have a nice day? Put a big thumbs up if you do like this video. Y'all take care.